What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about carbs, insulin, and anabolism. But first, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment for the algorithm. So I wanted to do this video because carbs and insulin have often gotten a bad rap in terms of fat loss. We've covered that many, many times in this channel. But one of the things we haven't covered is the opposite end of the spectrum, which is anabolism. If you were around when I was getting into bodybuilding back in the early 2000s, there was much made about insulin in terms of building muscle. In fact, many people would say, well, it's anabolic. You've got to have super fast digesting carbs after your workout to help you recover and spike your insulin so you can get a big boost of muscle protein synthesis. As you guys know, I'm someone who says you shouldn't really fear insulin. It's not that big of a deal, especially if you have healthy insulin sensitivity. But this idea that we need to spike our insulin with super fast digesting cyclic dextrin after our workouts, is that actually supported by any science? Really when it comes to building muscle, we're talking about two things. We're talking about muscle protein synthesis, which is the process of synthesizing new tissue in muscle. and muscle protein degradation, which is the process by which tissue is broken down. Whether or not you have a net gain or loss of muscle mass will be the balance between the rate of your skeletal muscle protein synthesis versus skeletal muscle protein degradation. So basically protein synthesis minus protein degradation equals your net protein balance. And over time, that's gonna determine essentially how much muscle you gain. When we look at carbohydrates and insulin, what do we see? Many people have assumed that since People who have type one diabetes who don't produce insulin do have lower lean body mass and less muscle mass that perhaps insulin is anabolic. Plus, we know that in bodybuilders who inject exogenous high amounts of insulin that there is good anecdotal evidence that that may actually be anabolic as well. And so people have kind of drawn a straight line between these two points and just assumed, well, insulin is anabolic. But what about insulin in the physiological range? Many things, when you give them in super physiological doses, do not have the same effects as when they're in a physiological dose. So if we look at the evidence on carbohydrate intake, physiological levels of insulin, and muscle protein synthesis, we don't really see any increase in muscle protein synthesis once you have a normal amount of insulin compared to a high amount of insulin physiologically. So that is, if you're type one diabetic and you're deficient in insulin, yes, it will reduce your rates of muscle protein synthesis. And getting insulin back to a normal level will restore that rate of muscle protein synthesis. So getting you back to a normal rate of muscle protein synthesis. But then just having a lot of carbs post-workout no matter how high GI they are, dextrose, maltodextrin, cyclic dextrin, pick your kind of dextrin, it is not going to further increase muscle protein synthesis. Now, some people have said, well, you need to really focus on restoring muscle glycogen after a workout. Probably important for athletes who are competing in multiple events during a day, or they have quick time to recover, or they're doing a very long endurance event that is glycogen depleting, where they're trying to drink something that will restore that muscle glycogen very quickly. But if you're talking about lifting once a day for like an hour or two, like just eat enough carbs and your muscle glycogen will be replenished by your next session. Like you don't need super fast digesting carbs in order to accomplish that. Now, what about muscle protein degradation? There are some studies, and I'll link to one in the description, where they do show that providing exogenous carbohydrate actually reduces the rate of muscle protein degradation post-workout. And that led to a greater net protein balance, at least in the short term. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna to lead to more muscle gain, but there are some studies looking at ketogenic diets versus non-ketogenic diets equal in protein showing that the ketogenic diet had a small impairment on anabolism in terms of building lean tissue. Now, if we try to explain that, it probably is due to the reduction in insulin, which is not having that inhibitory effect on muscle protein degradation, or perhaps they're just not able to train as hard because they don't have as much carbohydrate. Either way, I wanna be clear, it's not like it stops you from gaining muscle on a ketogenic diet. That's not the case. You can still gain plenty of muscle on a ketogenic diet. Will you build as much as somebody who also includes carbohydrate? I would say the data isn't conclusive yet, but right now, if anything, it points towards that you may build a little bit less muscle on a ketogenic diet. So if you're not somebody looking to absolutely maximize as much muscle as possible, it probably doesn't matter that much, but if you're looking 
to eke out every little bit of muscle you can, somebody like me who competes, then I think including carbohydrate, especially in your building phases, can be advantageous. If nothing else for the performance benefits and then possibly the benefits on inhibiting muscle protein degradation. But when it comes to post-workout, there's not a magic window. You don't need super fast digesting carbohydrate. Just focus on getting in some carbohydrate post-workout and how much will depend on your total daily carbohydrate intake. And if you're eating enough total daily carbohydrate and enough total daily calories, you are going to replenish that muscle glycogen over a 24 hour period anyway. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you next week.